Yo, 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 and uh, welcome to the final uh, final video of the um, of the course. And in, in, in this, the second uh, video dealing with integrated marketing communications, uh, we'll spend a bit of time talking about uh, direct marketing, uh, sales promotion, and uh, personal selling. So let's uh, let's let's jump uh, right into it. And and direct marketing is a, is an interesting. Um, is an interesting topic because uh, not everybody believes that it it is a standalone uh, component uh, as as I'm as I'm presenting it. Um, d people agree that direct marketing exists, but some people feel comfortable in putting direct marketing more as a as a type of uh, as a type of advertising. Uh, I choose to present it uh, as a standalone concept. And um, what's very interesting about it is, is because direct marketing, uh, there's some ambivalence about it. Uh, if if you go to, to look for definitions of direct marketing, you will you will end up scratching your head because there's a lot of different definitions of direct marketing out there. And 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 the, and the thing is, is like sometimes when you look at definitions of a, of, a, of a concept, they might not all be the same, but it at least they seem to be in the same ballpark. You look at some of these definitions of, of direct marketing and, and you're just sitting there scratching their head because, you know, to, to, to throw in a sports analogy, you know, one, one definition you, you think you're, you know, you think you're doing football. Another definition you think you're doing baseball. Another definition it's like you're doing hockey. And those are, you know, if you think about it, those are three very different sports. And like I said, sometimes if you look at these different definitions of direct marketing, you go, oh, my God, I don't even know what we're talking about. So I'm going to present a definition of direct marketing. Marketing. And um, keep in mind that this is a definition, and and like I just said, there's lots of different definitions of direct marketing out there. So uh, the one that, that I'm going to give you is it refers to activities by which sellers direct efforts to a target audience using one or more media to solicit response by phone, mail, the internet, or personal visit by a prospective customer. So activities by which sellers direct efforts to a target market or, excuse me to a target audience using one or more media to solicit a response by phone, mail, the internet, or a personal visit by a prospective customer. And one of the distinguishing factors of direct marketing versus some of the other um, components of the integrated uh, marketing communications mix is that there's a narrowing of, of the focus to uh, specific segments and increasingly to individual customers. So if, if for example, you're watching, uh, you know, you're watching television and an advertisement comes on the television, the advertising probably isn't saying, and I'll just use myself as an example, hey Paul, buy this product. Whereas with direct marketing, there might be an appeal that says, hey Paul R. Murphy, you know, like if I think about Amazon, hey Paul, if I go to Amazon.com uh, and I click in, right, it's going to remember. Right? And it's going to remember kind of what my search patterns have been. And so, for example, one of my search patterns is is I, I periodically go there and, to see how my logistics book uh, is is selling. Well, not surprisingly, you know, what comes up with my uh, portfolio is a bunch of other logistics or supply chain management type books. And if you were to go to Amazon, based on your purchasing history, what comes up for you is likely to be very different than what comes up for me. So again, one of the distinguishing factors of direct marketing is, is narrowing the target uh, or the markets to specific segments or increasingly an individual customer. That leads into a second uh, defining attribute of direct marketing and that's the idea that databases are extremely important and the better the database uh, the better the marketing because if you go back and you think about what we talked about 
you know, way back with marketing research and getting information. You know, data, data will, will, you can take data and turn that into information. And so the reason that Amazon is able to do the things that it does is it, you know, it's, it's, it's tracking my behavior, your behavior, when you go and, and, and visit Amazon. Uh, Amazon.com. So the, the the importance of databases, so that the stuff can be targeted, tailored specifically for an individual customer, and um, um, as opposed to advertising or or you know other kinds of things, which are which are much more of a mass, uh, you know, kind of a mass marketing uh, approach to things. All right. So the book talks about, and, and I, I have no problems with the book in, with respect to this, it, it talks about four distinct uh, types of uh, direct marketing, direct mail, catalog marketing, email, and mobile marketing. And, and what's really important about the last two, the, or the latter two, email and mobile marketing, those are really uh, good for building and maintaining relationships uh, with customers and that increasingly is one of the you know one of the, the, the hallmarks of contemporary marketing the building and the maintaining uh, of relationships and um, you should expect to see a, you know kind of um, a refinement and an and increasing amount of uh, direct marketing, both from an email as well from as well from a mobile uh, marketing perspective, uh, you know, over the next uh, over the next couple of years. All right, so that was a brief kind of quick and dirty uh, discussion of direct marketing. Uh, second uh, second component uh, or the second uh, yeah second component that we'll talk about in in this uh, discussion is uh, sales promotion and. Uh, sales promotion can be defined as short-term incentives that are designed to encourage the sale of a product. And uh, part of the key there is that, that sales promotions, again, the emphasis is on a short-term orientation. It's a short-term incentive designed to encourage the sale of product. And what sales promotion is doing is it's, it's not only saying buy, but it's saying buy now. And, and so, again, as I pointed out at the begin, at the, in the first discussion of integrated marketing communications, one of the challenges with, with kind of integrating the different components is that some of the components have, a very different, have very different time perspectives. And again, sales promotion has a very, very short-term time, uh, time perspective, whereas things like public relations and personal selling may have much, much longer time perspectives. So there's a lot of different kinds of sales promotion or consumer sales promotion. We'll focus on consumer sales promotion because there are also there are all are, there are also business to business sales promotion techniques. We'll focus on two um, uh, particular uh, consumer sales promotion techniques. The first of which is product sampling. This is not the same kind of sampling that we talked about when we talked about. Uh, market research. Product sampling, by contrast, refers to free distribution of a product uh, to facilitate future purchase. Okay, so free distribution of a product to facilitate future purchase. So, for example, a couple of you in your um, uh, longer writing assignment, the, you know, go to the five stores and, and look up the prices of, of four different products. A um, couple of you commented in your paper about how when you went into a grocery store on a weekend, uh, you were walking around the grocery store and there were all these little uh, like product displays that were that were set up. That would be an example of, of, of product sampling because you, you know if you've been in the grocery stores on the weekends, oftentimes what you'll have is you'll have some there's be like these little stations set up and there'll be like you know maybe little pieces of bacon or you know, I don't know, the bacon and uh, uh, yeah, you know, maybe there's a new flavor of bacon out, and they give you a little piece of bacon so that you so that you can taste it, right? So, um, one of the challenges associated with product sampling is that that it it can be pretty expensive, um, and um, one of the challenges associated with product sampling uh, involves how much of a product sample. Uh, should the marketer provide? Because you, you gotta, you, you know, here's the here's here's the here's the trade-off. 
you want to give enough of the product samples so that a, so that a prospective customer can get a sense for what the product is, what the product can do, but you don't want to give such a large sample that the customer has no need to purchase the product anytime soon. So, and, and obviously, the, the, the larger the, the, the size of the product sample that you give, right, um, the more expensive it's going to be. I mean, you know, if you think about, you know, uh, like cereal, if, you, if you're coming out with a new cereal and there's, you know, you put out a little box of a, a product sample of cereal, if you put out a 16-ounce box of that, it's going to be a while before anybody buys it. So what you often see with the with the cereal is you'll see it in a much smaller, maybe a three or four ounce uh, 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 box, so that it, there's enough there so you can get a sense for what the cereals you know looks like, what it tastes like, you know things like that. But it's not so much that you're not going to buy it anytime uh, anytime soon. So product sampling is is one type of consumer sales promotion. The second kind is uh, second type is coupons, and the technical definition of a of a coupon is a certificate that gives buyers a saving when purchasing a product, right? And uh, coupons are often used in uh, the maturity phase of of product life cycle. Um, and uh, one of the things that we had mentioned. Uh, way back at the beginning of the course was um, you know how technology is is impacting marketing couponing is a really good example of that because increasingly what marketers are doing is they're using mobile coupons and remember if you if you remember back to our discussion of marketing in the 2010s you know, we found or, or we discussed the fact that the redemption rates for mobile coupons tend to be much higher than for other types of couponing. And, and that's important for a variety of because, you know, if you think about the, the old traditional, you know, the coupon comes in the Sunday paper. Well, I look at, you know, I, I, I do. I, I still clip paper coupons and I don't use, I don't really use, uh, I don't really use mobile coupons. But you know, I, I'll look at I'll look at some of these uh, coupons in the newspaper, and and one of the challenges with me is you know a lot of them are for like baby products, diapers and shampoo and and you know things like that. Well, I don't have a baby, um, so that 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 coupon is those those set of coupons are, are are virtually worthless to me. And what oftentimes happens with mobile coupons is the mobile coupons are effective because they're going oftentimes to people who have either you know used the product or the company in the past or have uh, you know have indicated an interest in in the product so there's much a much greater likelihood that if you kind of you know if you kind of go to the pond where the fishes are there's a lot better opportunity of catching a fish than if you go to a pond where you're not quite sure if there's any fish in them or not um, and again, one of the challenges with with coupons is similar to the to the to the challenge with product sampling. And remember, the, the challenge with product sampling is you know how big of a sample how big of a sample right should we give the customer because you, you know the, the bigger the sample, the more expensive it's going to be. It's the same. There's a there's a similar thing with coupons. I mean, if you think about it, if you, let's say you've got a product that costs a dollar, if if you have a coupon for five cents, right? It's probably not going to attract a lot of attention. If, on the other hand, you offer a 50 cent coupon on a one dollar product, there's probably going to be a much higher redemption. But the problem there is that the five cent coupon on the one dollar product allows you to clear, you know, 95 cents versus the 50 cent coupon allows you to only clear 50 cents. So again, there's the kind of like, you know, what's the size of the, uh, you know, what's the size of the coupon that's going to attract the attention, that's, a, that's going to encourage people uh, to act with, without the organization, without the marketers giving away the farm. All right. So the final thing that we're going to uh, talk about with respect to uh, integrated marketing communications is, uh, is personal selling. And personal selling refers to personal presentation by a firm sales force for the purpose of making sales and building customer relationships. So again, personal presentation by a firm sales force for the purpose of making sales and building customer relationships. And the key there is 
And how this, how this definition is different from when I took my principles of marketing course is the last three words, building customer relationships, right? So there's a very different focus now, or there should be a very different focus now to personal selling than there was 20, 30, 40 years ago. And I'm going to briefly run through the personal selling process, and I'm going to use the process that, that I have taught. I feel very comfortable with it. It's different, uh, it's different than the process that's outlined in your book. There's, there's similarities, but, but uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not identical. All right? So the first, the first step or the first phase in the personal selling process is what's known as prospecting. And this is where an organization identifies qualified potential customers. And the key word there is not just, uh, you know, that you're identifying customers, is that you're identifying qualified, qualified potential customers. So, for example, okay, you know, uh, I'd like to have a Lamborghini. Guess what? Not happening anytime soon unless I win the lottery. So if the Lamborghini dealership is like, you know, prospecting, trying to figure out, right, one of the things that the Lamborghini dealership, if they, if they were able to get this information, they would probably be looking for net worth in excess of a certain dollar amount. And that dollar amount, you know, I'll just throw something out. Maybe the net worth is like $500,000, right? So that's a very different, so it's not just, you know, hey, who wouldn't want to have a Lamborghini, right? A lot of people would want to have a Lamborghini. Problem is, if you go if you go chasing after, you know, customers who aren't, have no way that they're going to purchase the product, you're really wasting your time. So the prospecting is where the organization identifies qualified uh, potential customers. The next phase after the prospecting is what's known as the pre-approach. And this is where the organization uh, learns about the prospective customer. And, and this, is, um, this is really important uh, because um, it, it's much easier to collect information or learn about prospective customers these days uh, you know, because of the advances in, uh, the advances in technology. Right. So, you know, it's the old do your homework. You know, if you're a salesperson and, and, and you're looking to convince people, you know, that they were an organization. Right. I mean, this applies that this this personal selling process applies to either consumer goods or uh, business to business process. But, you know, if you're if, if you're an organization, you know, if you're Boeing, uh, Boeing, the aircraft manufacturer, one of the things you're going to be looking at is you're, you're going to be looking at the various airlines and you're going to be looking at not only what fleets they have, but you're going to be looking at the age of the fleet and saying, you know what, your planes are getting a little old there. You know, you might want to think about, all right, you might want to think about some newer planes, all right, so the, so the, the, the pre-approach. The pre-approach is followed by the approach, and that refers to the initial meeting between the salesperson and the prospective customer. And a key thing, again, okay, so again, that's the initial meeting between the salesperson and the prospective customer. The key thing there, it's the, it's the thing that maybe your mom or your dad or maybe multiple grandparents told you, you don't get a second chance at a first impression. All right, and I'll give you a little a little story. I'm I'm running a little long here, but that's it is what it is. Um, you know, I I periodically uh, through my time at John Carroll, I periodically have had lunch or dinner with a number of, uh, of uh, companies that have uh, uh, recruited uh, bowler school students, primarily primarily logistics students. It's, that's my alleged area of expertise. And one of the things they tell me is is that um, they make up their minds about who they want to pursue within the first 30 seconds of meeting a person, right? Think about that, right? Think about how, but that's the, impo that's the importance of, of understanding that you don't get a second chance at a first impression. So things like, if you're thinking about this from your own perspective, many of you are, you know, once you graduate from John Carroll, you're going to get a job. So when you go on an interview, keep in mind the fact that the, the, the person, the interviewer, they're looking at how you're dressed. They're looking at, you know, uh, 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 are you making eye contact? Um, um, you know, what kind of handshake do you have? Uh, you know, things of that nature. So the key thing in, in, in the approach is, again, it's the initial meeting between the salesperson and the prospective customer. And a lot of times the decisions by the prospective customer of whether or not they want to do business with the company, those decisions are made very quickly, right? That's important because, you know what, sometimes people will have tuned you out because 
what follows the approach is what's known as the presentation and this is where the the, uh, the salesperson indicates how her or his organization can solve the customers issues and notice that I didn't say product because what the salesperson is trying to do is it's trying to help the the prospective customer deal with a particular issue or issues and what the idea is is that if you can help the the prospective customer deal with issue and issue or issues the product will follow so part of it is again is is you know thinking about I mean if 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 you were you know if you know you were trying to convince the bowler school that we need new furniture in the class in most of our classrooms one of the things that you might say is 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 look you know don't you don't go in there saying hey buy new chairs from us but you basically look um, you know it's now 2015 um, you know there's been a lot of advances in in ergonomics and things like that and, and so you approach it from from you know from perspective where the, the focus is on solving problems uh, addressing issues as opposed to a focus on a product uh, what inevitably is going to happen and, and what leads to the next step in the the, the, the uh, personal selling process is something called handling objections uh, this is where the salesperson seeks out, clarifies, and overcomes uh, objections uh, from prospective customers. And sometimes what a prospective customer will do is, sometimes a prospective customer will kind of create an objection just to see how the salesperson's going to respond. And so frequently what will happen is, you know, if you think about a lot of times with purchases, people say, well, I can't afford that. And, and if the salesperson goes, wow, that's too bad. And walks away. Well, no, uh, you know what could the salesperson? What could the salesperson do uh, to uh, uh, to convince you, right? And and so you know I think about uh, you're you're not getting you're you're not necessarily getting the best of uh, you're not getting the best of Paul Murphy here. When I when I teach in person, I always wear a suit. I always wear a tie. Um, and and when I go to buy suits, you know, sometimes I sit there and go, oh man, I don't really know what is what the salesperson might do. Is might go, oh man, you look really sharp in that suit. Uh, uh, right? Yeah, appeal to something, right? You go back to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs kind of kind of stuff, right? So again, there's 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 the there's the handling objections, right? Once you once the salesperson has handled objections, then comes closing what's called closing the sale. This is where you get a firm commitment from the buyer. And again, you know, sometimes a salesperson isn't good at closing the deal, right? And 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 so um, you know what is going to need to take place in order for in order to get a firm commitment from the buyer. You say, well, good, doc. Twenty three minutes, we're done. You knew. personal selling process should not end with the closed sale and as the book points out there's the follow-up this is where you contact the buyer after the sale you say why would you do that because go back to the definition we're building customer relationships and so um, I drive a BMW. I drive a BMW 4 Series. It's a, it's a convert. I have a convertible. Yay for me! Inevitably, two weeks after I and I lease them, two weeks after I've leased the car, inevitably my salesperson contacts me. Paul, like it? Any problems? You know, keep in mind, blah 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 blah. Right? That's the kind of thing you do because remember, right? Remember what we talked about back in consumer behavior. There's this whole cognitive dissonance concept, and so. Part of what you're trying to do with the follow-up is, is you're trying to alleviate the cognitive dissonance. Another thing that you're trying to do with the follow-up is not only build but maintain the relationship. Okay, So, I went way long, sorry, 24.15 uh, 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 seconds. Um, I've enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully I'll meet some of you in person. See you down the road. Bye.